When you as a trader have a painful lump in your stomach, contrary to what you may think, it rather often means you're onto something good. My lump is the size of an ostrich egg. I just hope it doesn't burst. In the previous episode, not only did I tell you that I'm all in, I also told you why. As unpleasant as it may be, proceeding with this calculated risk is not only my optimal move, but also a forced one. But to actually follow through with this is harder than what first meets the eye. So before we get started, let me give you some psychological insights. But for your own safety, please hold tightly onto someone's hand, for we're going deep. A good part of my days I spend thinking. For good performance, whether at work or in your private life, stems from careful planning and maturation. Since five years back, I read a hundred books a year. And that's actually reading them, from the first page to the very last, and not just randomly riffling through each book for ten minutes. Which, according to some, apparently accounts for actually having read one. Here in my garage, just bought this new sports car. It's fun to drive around up in the Hollywood Hills. That's like picture googling Hawaii and then claiming to have been there just because you have an idea what it looks like. Well, screw those smug air braggers. Reading that much is an effort that doesn't come easily, but the rewards greatly surpass the often painstaking hours. Few books are truly great, and the ones that are force you to devour them with patience as reading is a slow endeavor. If you can't glut on books. But as your reading becomes frequent, time and again you'll surprise yourself by knowing things you didn't know that you knew. By just shoving your brain does you no good. All new thoughts, concepts and impressions also need to be processed and digested and turned into conclusions of your own. That is why I spend a good chunk of each day thinking, which habitually evolves into pondering. So what's your point with all of this, you may ask? Well, reading real books and processing what you read will actually teach you to think for yourself which will work to your advantage both in your work commitments and in life itself. It somewhat detaches yourself from being just another mindless echo chamber. For if you think that most of your thoughts are unique, think again. Most of our thoughts are proven to be mere collective repetitions where we simply parrot the fashion ideas of the day. For coming up with strings of new distinctive thoughts is incredibly exhausting and time consuming. Reading and reflecting done right are an antidote to the collective hypnosis. It's one of few narrow roads that lead us back to who we truly are. All I've just described is what we call sentiment, and it surely exists on the markets too. Anybody who thinks you will ever become a winning trader by being a herd animal is delusional. Trading is a serious sum game, and whatever the majority does will slaughter you if you decide to join their team. This is why the road to success, whether in trading or in any other field, is painful, unpleasant and often boring. For in trading, most correct moves will make you feel uncomfortable and leave you in constant doubt and with a lump in your stomach. You may well know intellectually that a certain decision is the correct one, but emotionally, when push comes to shove, you make up one excuse after the other for aborting the game plan, just because it doesn't feel good. What subconsciously happens is that you are being pulled towards the safety of the herd, and this is one hell of a strong force, one that I too battle every day, and one to which I often succumb as well. Despite my being caught in this dangerous yet necessary maneuver of being all in, don't for a second think that I intend to remain in this state for long. I have a thorough plan of laddering out in order to quickly decrease my risks. Until then, there is no room for mistakes, and staying away from the luring siren of the herd is paramount to stand a chance at all. Now, for this plan to work, it must contain all of the three following components. One. I need to give my money the biggest bang for its buck. The money needs to be invested into something with the highest potential returns, ideally a 10 bag or more. 2. The risk needs to be as tiny as possible. A common misconception is that high return prospects always equate to proportionately high risks. That's not the case. And 3. Whatever I invest in needs to deliver within short, for what good would it do me if my all-in position moves sideways for years and then goes up by 10,000% once I'm wiped out? So, where then is my money currently at work? Well, stay put for the next episode and you'll find out. Just kidding. I found a company that ticks all three boxes, given the information being public so far. 
This picture may be revised with time, and if so, I will act accordingly. But given what the market knows today, I like my chances. The company is called QuickBit. QuickBit is a Swedish fintech company that provides intermediary cryptocurrency payment solutions between online retailers and customers. Yeah, that was a colorful and poetic description. If you're a bureaucrat. It's a figure of speech, Morty! They're bureaucrats! I don't respect them! Now, the customers pay as usual with fiat with their credit or debit cards, but the retailers get paid immediately in crypto. In September alone, QuickBit was the single biggest buyer and seller of Litecoin. But as I'm not here to give you investment advice, I will not expand any further on the company itself. What I will do, however, is to justify my strategical thoughts. Now, any positions based on technical analysis are typically stronger when also backed up by fundamentals. This means, for example, that the overall risk when going long a company is lower when the company's fundamentals are strong. A company that shows strong profits and exponential growth is much less risky to long than one heading for bankruptcy. QuickBit hasn't been around for long. Its business focus is pioneering and so far is pretty much the only kid in town. Ever since its launch, it's shown heavy and steady growth, so so far its pros are many and its cons few. The new CEO recently bought stocks for an equivalent of 6 years of his previous year's salary. Several other insiders have invested healthily too. Solid insider purchases are usually a good sign as the folks behind the steering wheel know better than the market what lays ahead. For nobody with functioning brain cells invests 6 years worth of salaries before taxes in something he doesn't truly believe in. The company currently makes about 12.5 million US dollars in annual profits, but its company valuation is only at 80 million, meaning that the PE ratio, that is price per earnings, is less than 7. This means that if someone were to purchase the company at its current valuation, it would pay for itself in less than 7 years. Compare that to Amazon, which has a PE ratio of 74, which means that they, with no further company growth, you would have to wait until the year 2093 until you would even be break even on your investment. Normally I pay little attention to the fundamentals, but this time it's a different story. Having spent somewhere between 1 and 2000 hours studying cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology myself, I'm well aware of the general public's ignorance on the subjects. Hence they remain, in my opinion, unhealthy skeptics who yell no without even knowing what the question is to begin with. QuickBit's numbers speak a loud and clear language of their own. It's like Italian. Beautiful and melodic to listen to, but if you don't understand it, watching a non-subtitled movie in Italian would make little sense. Had the same numbers been disclosed in any already established industry, I can assure you that company's stock price would shoot through the roof to where it belongs. For this reason, whenever I read about QuickBet on stocks forums and in the media, I'm, I'm amazed at the oftentimes fantasy land interpretations of what the company and blockchain fintech are really about. It's like listening to people discuss discussing the shady nonsensical internet in 1995. But the very fact that the crowds don't seem to appreciate the potentials of this already market dominant company is enough for me to know I'm onto something of value. For the same loud all-knowing voices <coughs> mocked my biometrics investment in 2012 and Bitcoin position in 2015. Of course, all stars being aligned in a beautiful formation is no guarantee for success the stock price can still go downhill, for no company is immune to the gravity of sudden bad fortune or unforeseen damage. But being all in doesn't mean I risk everything. In theory it does, but in practice it doesn't. For this is not a derivative, no leverage trade with knockout levels and liquidation prices. This is a stock, and the only way for me to get wiped out in one blow is if they were to go bankrupt. This doesn't mean that the stock price can still plummet, but many plummets are temporary overreactions, either technical such or based on exaggerated news. In those cases, the stock prices tend to bounce back just as quickly. Worst come to worst, I lose half of my funds, which will still keep me afloat to execute my plan B. I just hope it's the last time in my life when I'm put in the spot of being forced to be all in. Adding the fundamentals and technicals together, an outburst upwards clearly outweighs one downwards. But despite the positives, I still have a lump in my stomach. I take that as a good omen. Come with me. I will soon upload a technical analysis video on QuickBit. Keep an eye out in a day or two. But until then, don't forget to subscribe to my channel.
In the next episode I will tell you about the time last year when I lost a hundred thousand bucks in one hour. Yeah, you heard me. A hundred grand. But until then, peace.